Wait a little bit. Okay. So this is obviously a new thing for us, but um, we wanted to do this just, I guess, because we've had such an outpouring of love and an outpouring of thoughtfulness and prayers and all sorts of stuff. And so we live in a couple different places. Um, and we get a lot of a big family, I guess, with all these, our Virginia family, our Lincoln family, our Provo family, our Canadian family, our Utah families. Um, and it's absolutely been amazing to be a part of this whole little dealio. So far, everything okay? You guys hear me okay? I just wanted to thank you so much for all your prayers because we truly, truly feel them. Um, it's amazing strength through prayer because I've been buoyed up and helped beyond my own strength. And it's been awesome. So thank you so much. And um, we ask for your continued prayers because... We're going to definitely need him. <laughs> um, we have had some pretty amazing experiences within the last week. It was, I guess, a week ago yesterday uh, that Stacy and the children were. I guess we should clarify because there's been some ambiguity. Yeah. Um, Stacy and I had been down in Florida to her sister's house for a family reunion because her mom and dad were just getting back from their mission from St. Lucia. And so we had, and they had just moved to Florida. So we went down for a family reunion and we live in Rapid City, South Dakota. We drove down to Denver uh, because we got excellent rates out of Denver. Flew down there. I came back a few days earlier than Stacy and the children did. And they were flying back from Florida uh, to Denver on Saturday morning. And then they were driving from Denver back up to Rapid City. So that's kind of the context. And so Stacy was with all of the children, uh, all five of our kids, Lily, Isabella, Talmadge, Benson, and Nelson. I know that not everybody has met all of those kids, but we, they're all fantastic and they're all very, very good. Um, so she was about halfway in between and um, uh, swerved on the vehicle and we, uh, it rolled a bunch of times. And uh, uh, Stacy, Talmadge and Lily all were life flighted to Scotts Bluff, Nebraska. And then Isabella, Benson and Nelson were taken to Wheatland, Wyoming. And this was about 4.15 or somewhere in that ballpark. We're not exactly sure what time the accident happened. And um, so I was, I was in Rapid City yeah. working. We got a call. Um, there was a man. I don't remember his name. But I kept telling him we needed to call Josh. And he promised me, he said, I give you my word that I will get a hold of him. That was Troy Huffer. So we think... Troy for that. Um, the chaplain. What was his name again? I don't recall his name. Um, anyways, there was a there were so many people on um, it was actually on the Wyoming highways and so there was no service and but there was one guy in front of me and he um, I got out of the vehicle by myself but I felt like I was gonna pass out so I just laid down and I could tell that Something was broken, my clavicle and my scapula ended up being broken. So I was kind of on my side, but I could see him and he was helping my children and he was helping my Lily and he kept reassuring me. And then, then there was a man that came and prayed with me and said that he would be by Lily's side and praying with her. So just the, just that in itself, there was just so much kindness and they're holding up blankets to shade me because it was so hot and 
helping me get water and just it was and when it happened it was really amazing because I should have felt opposite of what I felt I felt total peace and I felt that there would be a miracle I thought I knew something was seriously wrong with Lily and I thought that Lily would be the miracle but ended up being that my four children were the miracle that they were bruised that's it they went basically unharmed and that was an absolute miracle so I'm grateful for um, the for um, Heavenly Father and his um, the peace that I felt at that terrible time it was amazing it was a miracle um, while in Wheatland there was the bishop there and his wife stayed with our kids and for probably what six well I got, hours? I got the call I got the call at just before six o'clock um, no just before five o'clock sorry I got the call and um, so they had been with them somewhere between five and six until I got I drove down to Wheatland which was about normally it's a three and a half hour drive but it took me because of phone calls and all the communication it took me I didn't get there until just right around midnight or so so they were with them from for at least six hours um, and they he gave the children all blessings and he and his wife were very tender and very sweet to our children. When I got there, they were all sleeping. And for me as a mother, I knew that they were going to a totally different hospital. But there was still peace, and it was those angels, that bishop and his wife, that were there for them. That these children who had just gone through something so horrible and then they were on their own at this hospital but this bishop and his wife were there and it was so comforting so we thank them so this was kind of an interesting little experience for Stacy and I too because earlier this year Stacy had the thought that something was going to happen to Lily Obviously, she didn't know what or really pay a ton of attention to it, but in a weird little way, that was kind of a tender mercy. And on the way to Denver, when we were driving down to Denver, um, I, had, Stacey and I were just talking, and I had felt recently that something very hard, something very hard was going to come into our lives. And we just were talking about it on the way down there. And um, I don't know, it's not like we were scared, but it's just kind of one of those feelings you don't really love to feel. And you wonder if it's just your brain or if it's something that Heavenly Father was helping us to prepare for. So when I got the call on Saturday, on Saturday, um, it was like I knew right then that Heavenly Father was just like, okay, Josh, here you go. And I, I just felt really at peace. And, and I just kneeled down on the floor and asked Heavenly Father to give me the strength to know what his will was for our family and to then be able to give us the strength to be able to understand and trust in his will. And I also prayed at that time because I knew that Stacy was driving and that she was tired and I felt really bad about putting her in that situation. things rushed into my mind about trying to save money, shouldn't have made a drive to, from Denver, all of these things, but 
anyways, I, I just pleaded with the Lord that Stacy would have the ability to be okay and at peace and that she wouldn't blame herself at all for this situation. Because that was, I know that that's the natural tendency that many of us would want to do. And, and anyways, when I got done with that prayer, I just felt the strength come over me and the peace come over me that was not my own. And um, I was able to get things organized and I mean, it's kind of crazy now that I think about it, but I came home and showered. Like I was totally sweaty and dirty and I, I came home and I just felt like I needed to get in the shower. And so I showered and I just felt an overwhelming, Josh, nothing you can do difference. And I just felt peace and strength and I got one of my really, really good buddies um, to go with me and they drove down and picked the kiddos up and, um, in Wheatland and, and uh, Scott's left. I got there about two in the morning and between all that I had found out that Lily um, had sustained serious head trauma and that they weren't able to um, they weren't able to do anything for her and and it was clear from talking with the doctors that even if we would have had the best setup and the best medical and everything on site, um, the type of trauma that she um, had for her head was not something that they could have fixed or corrected even if we had all the resources available. So anyways, um, I'm going to share. Well, I'll, I will add to you that it was really amazing. Heavenly Father took care of us. There was a doctor. I asked the physicians that I was talking to if they knew of any LDS people at the hospital that could give my wife and my daughter and my son a blessing. And it turned out that there was a doctor on staff there who was able to go and do that because I knew that I wasn't going to be able to see Stacy and Cummins and Lily for uh, six or so hours. It ended up being much longer than that. But um, so he was able to go there and give them a blessing. And that gave me a lot of peace and a lot of strength and comfort. So, anyways, that's just a little story. Many of you have not had a chance to engage with us and talk to us, but that's kind of just a little bit about um, how we got into the situation. Yesterday was a wonderful day. We had her funeral services, and it was really, truly a celebration for us. And I think it would be good for you guys to hear a little bit of what Stacy shared, and I will try and share some of what I shared there as well. So that's okay with everybody. Um, so I started out um, telling um, about Lily's birth. Um, she was born in Orem, Utah, and um, I had contractions the day before, and then that night we went into the hospital, they sent us home, and then I thought to myself, how bad is this supposed to get? And then it got really bad, and we finally went to the um, doctor's office, and the doctor said, we can't have her here. Well, she started to do an exam, yeah. and she looked right at me, and she said, Josh, <laughs> can you drive fast? So we um, drove, she led the way, and we followed her speeding through from Provo to Orem Hospital, and um, I just told Josh, I said, don't stop at any lights. Um, and then we got there, basically laid on the bed, and my water broke, and she came. And I followed a trail of clothes <laughs> into the hospital because Stacy was taking her ready. clothes off. I was ready to have her into the hospital. And um, ever since, it's been such a, such a joy. And she was very much um, a cuddler. Like she was, um, she had to be cuddled to sleep. And as a first parent, you're wanting to. Um, so we'd cuddle her and cuddle her, then quietly put her down, and she'd cry, and so we'd cuddle her some more. But she's also always been a cuddler. She always just likes to be close, and that's been um, wonderful. Um, so from the moment that Lily could crawl, she um, loved to dance. She walked a little late, and so whenever we'd put music on, she would 
crawl dance. We call it her crawl dance because she would somehow dance while crawling. Um, and ever since, she's just been dancing and loved that. Um, she loved princesses. And um, if we ever went out, um, she would wear normal clothes. As soon as we got home, she'd have to strip them all off really quick and get into her princess dress. And um, she did not like to wear pants. Um, she always had to have a skirt or a dress because well, she just, was what, like five yeah. or six, I think. It was oh, it was. I bet even later. Than later. That. Yeah. She wouldn't even put her pants on. Yeah, she wasn't fancy enough. But she was a well-rounded princess because she loved um, playing in the dirt and the mud and getting it all over the place. And everything she did was a full-body experience. When she painted, it wasn't just it was on the paper, but it was also all over her face, all over her arms, all over her hands, everywhere. And um, we have a picture in the photo montage of her eating some ribs, and it is all over, like all over. And I remember she was she came in with a yellow face one time, and I asked her, "What what did oh, you yeah. do?" And she said. I was smelling the lilies, and so it was the pollen all over her face. Like she just like buried her face into the flower just to get the most, the best experience. And then she couldn't sleep for two days because of the intense allergic reaction in her nose yeah. from all the pollen. I'd see her to the doctor because it got so bad. But she just um, loved every, just everything was a full body experience. Um, so when she was six months old, I entered into her into a baby contest. And she won first for happiest and um, best smile. And she has carried that those characteristics on throughout her whole life. Um, she's always had a big smile and excitement for life. And um, uh, we remember one time that we were on, we went to DC, we lived in Richmond, so we went to DC for just the day or whatever. And um, she would just smile at everyone. And then those people that you might be a little wary of, she would even get them smiling, and it like changed their whole countenance, and it was just really, really neat to see. The kind of people that you kind of avoid normally, <laughs> really yeah. attracted, and they just blossomed and smiled, and yeah. then you thought better of them yeah. when they had a big smile on their face. Um, Lily attended kindergarten in Richmond, Virginia, at Gaten Elementary, and she loved she loves loved to do art, and she was actually nominated for a piece that she did and it was um, of Owls in the Moonlight. Um, she participated in What I Want to Be When I Grow Up Parade, and of course she was um, in her tights and her leotard and her ballet slippers. She wanted to be a dancer. Um, she um, would always ask me, teach me a ballet class. So we would, she put on her ballet shoes and her tights and her leotard, and we'd stretch and we'd jump and we'd leap and and we dance like no one's watching. And those are some of my favorite memories of her when she was little. Um, her and she would sing. Oh, yeah, she would sing. All around the house <laughs> as loud as she can possibly she, And belt she could it belt it. She could lungs. really belt it. It was. She was always singing and dancing. Julie Andrews, the sound of music <laughs> all the time yeah. in our house. Yeah. And her and Izzy were like two peas in a pod. They were always um, dressing up together and using, like just they would make up the most awesome things. They just used their imaginations. And it was so fun for me to watch them um, do that. Um, so Josh finished dental school in Richmond and moved to Lincoln, Nebraska. And she went to Russo Elementary first through third grade. And she started taking official dance classes and loved, 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 like being on stage and performing. That was her favorite thing. And then she started piano, which she just loved too. And she, every time she passed the piano, she'd just sit down and start playing her songs. And I just loved watching her um, cultivate her talents and develop her talents. Um, Lily and Izzy, they had awesome friends in Lincoln, and they would go down to our basement, and they would um, just dress up and play and make up all these plays and dances, and it was just, they just had the best time. Um, she loved Barbies, and I think she played in them until she was about 12 years old, but she just loved dressing them up and just 
going on adventures <laughs> with them and she always had me do their hair so that was really fun um <laughs> she developed such a love for reading and learning well, i just sent her her barbies fancy nancy oh fancy Nancy. when she was, was a little girl favorites. fancy yeah. nancy everything had to be <laughs> fancy nothing could just be plain nothing oh, could had be to have had to have frills and yep. fluff and bells and twirl <laughs> Full, full body, full <laughs> experience. Um, oh, so she loved reading She and loved learning. She just would always tell me about what she learned at school, and she would get into her books that sometimes I'd have to pry them away from her because she loved them so much, which I love too. It looks like we're starting to break up. Huh. Um, I don't know what to say about the breaking up part. Um, um, I can't believe I can't believe how many of you guys are taking the time out of your day to listen to this. This is truly awesome. It is absolutely humbling. Um, let's keep going. Can you guys hear us okay? Thumbs up if you can. Broadcast interrupted. What does that mean? Well, we have. Amber said broadcast interrupted. There's people giving thumbs up now. So if you're giving us thumbs up, that means. Uh, it's working. working. Seems okay. to be okay. Holy cow. It's okay. It'll be recorded fine then. Okay. So I'll just continue. Um, and then when she, Lily was eight years old, she chose to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And she was baptized in Utah with both sides of our family there. And it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. And then we moved to Rapid City in 2014. Mm -hmm. And she was um, loved dancing. She did ballet, lyrical and jazz. She continued her piano and she wanted to, she started cello. And she, when she was in sixth grade, she added on track and field and cross country. And I worried about her because that's a lot for a 12 year old to do plus school. And while she did all this, she um, maintained a 4.0 um, GPA, which was pretty awesome. She worked really hard at everything and she just, I said, are you, I would say to her, I'm like, are you okay? You're, you're just in, you're really, really busy, and I don't want you to be too overwhelmed. She just said, I love everything I'm doing. So I'm just so glad that she got that opportunity um, last year to experience so many things, and she truly, truly loved everything that she did. So I just want to, we have had amazing teachers for Lily through the years. Every teacher that has made a big impact on her life and really found ways to encourage her to learn and encourage her to just to do what Stacy has described to just full experience um, so many teachers gave her the opportunity to get into advanced activities yeah. and advanced learning advanced whatever and she and she was just she was just always ready for it mentally and she just had an enthusiasm that that encouraged that a lot. I remember going to a parent teacher conference in Lincoln by myself and I can't remember why Stacy couldn't go. That's not the case. That's for yes. sure only ever happened once. <laughs> but I went and the teacher, I remember talking to her and I just asked, uh, how is Lily doing, Reverend? She says, I love Lily. She's like having another adult in the class. Mm -hmm. She's always asking if I can help. She's always asking um, what she can do. She clarifies for me what I just said to the students to help them understand. She's always answering the questions. Um, anyways, it was just, it was uh, absolutely a wonderful. Amber saying, uh, okay, gotcha. Can you guys see each other's comments on here? This is amazing. You guys are just putting all this stuff on here. Thank you. Do you guys see each other's comments? No, they can't. They cannot? Actually, they can, but not. Yeah, well, I'm new at this. So, 
Um, um, I was just going to say just a couple more things about her. She loved the water. We this since we've lived here, basically we've gone to the lake every at least once a week, and it's about 20 minutes away. It's a beautiful lake that's clear, and she actually became quite the uh, lake snob because any other any other place that we went wasn't well, clear enough for her. Sorry it was for just gross. sorry for the Richmonders and sorry for the Lincoln. Nights, but you guys, the water just is not the same as it is in the Mountain West or in the lakes. So I apologize, but we like clear water. She loved it. She was swimming and paddle boarding and um, boating and kayaking, everything in the water. And she loved um, the rain. And whenever it rained, she had to be outside and she'd just have her arms outstretched. She just did that. A few weeks ago, well, it was just she was, a yeah, storm. she was twirling around and just had her face up and just again the full body experience. <laughs> <laughs> I told her to, I was just joking and I said, Lily, we're going to need to have the trampoline held down when we were watching a hailstorm on the 14th of August come through uh, Rapid City, and um, she just took off. I was just teasing, but she took off. <laughs> out and I've got it on video I should post it she took off out underneath of the trampoline to try and hold the trampoline down when there's hell coming down like nobody's business they ended up being about golf ball size hell um, she's always been very a very strong girl like all of her boy cousins she's undefeated let's just say that with the wrestling <laughs> so pretty cool um, um, I don't she, know what's beeping at us for you know Okay. She um, preferred cold weather over hot weather. She loved any kind of snow sport, just being out in the snow, and she would always make hot chocolate when she came in. Um, she became an expert baker. She, I taught her how to make bread, and she perfected it. And she, it was awesome. She also um, made one hour most bread. awesome cookies. One hour bread recipe is a really good good one to share. <laughs> if you don't know it, we should share it with you for sure. But she made the most awesome cookies, and Josh is pretty picky when it comes to cookies, but hers were, um, they uh, I make awesome met cookies. the expectations. No, Lily, oh, sorry. I, I am kind of picky with cookies, and I really do think that she, well, they were so good that on multiple occasions I would tell myself I'm going to just eat one or two and I am pretty sure I ate 8 to 12 in like <laughs> less than 5 minutes. Uh, See, and I remember one experience, I'm in Young Women's and we're just driving from where we went and the girls were on their phones and Lily was looking, all the girls were looking at cute boys and talking about cute boys. And I look at Lily and she's looking at recipes, good recipes. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, let's just keep it that way for a while. <laughs> she loved to show me videos of people, you know, they have a, wherever they are on just people making cakes or any kind of recipe. She always wanted to show me. Um, yes, yeah. So that was um, pretty cool. And um, about two Christmases ago, well, her friends were wanting iPads and iPods. She wanted a globe because she wanted to learn about the different like countries. the globe that spins yes, around on a... for her room. So she just loved learning, and she would talk my ear off about different things. And I remember I took all the kids before we left for Florida on a date. So each day I took each one, and we went and got their school supplies and their new school clothes and went to lunch, and I asked all of them, I said, what are you most excited for? And she said, I'm most excited to learn about the black holes. So <laughs> she, oh, she just loved just um, learning. It was really awesome. Um, she was an amazing babysitter and always so responsible and um, an expert hugger. Whenever I leave the house, she would probably give me 20 hugs by the time I got out the door. That's no exaggeration. No exaggeration. And it, I couldn't leave unless um, I gave her a hug, which Josh and I say that we got um, 10,000 hugs in 13 years, and that should last our lifetime, which we're so, so grateful for. One last, um, she loved to go camping, hiking, and pheasant hunting. And with the pheasant hunting, she totally got into gutting them 
and she became quite the expert. <laughs> yeah, she loved the first year. The first year, she just wanted a, a people to show her how just a little bit. And then she wanted an anatomy lesson, so Harold gave her an anatomy lesson. It's one of the guys we hunted with, and. The next year, she was right on the buck. As soon as we got the pheasants out, she was right over to tear the bellies apart and uh, get all the guts out and look at it. Um, I wanted to read. She actually, for her English class, um, they... Hey, Shan, did you post that to the... Oh, I think she po I think Shannon posted this to the... Um, oh, did she? Uh, GoFundMe site. I'll post it for sure. I'll post it on her Facebook. Okay. So I should say right now, we we really have been overwhelmed. Uh, Stacy's sister Shannon set up her and her husband set up a GoFundMe account. I know many of you are aware of that. Uh, initially, they kind of described it as a funeral um, a memorial fund. I guess uh, we have a lot bigger vision for that. Um, we would really, really like to have this fund be a perpetual fund. Um, I want it to be really, really gold. Stacy might get upset at me for saying this, but um, I, back in February, had been having thoughts or impressions about creating an organization or some way, and many of you saw on Facebook where I was kind of sharing daily what the kids had done or something like that, that they had done good. And I just had some really strong feelings then that I should start some venue that people could go and share what they've done or observed or things that they, um, anyway, some venue of sharing good or promoting the good because we have so much promotion of non-reality or so much promotion of bad stuff that I just really wanted to um, have people have a venue for that and, uh, and even in my brain I even came up with a goal that I would like to have a 10 million dollar uh, amount by January 1st of 2020 and Stacy says what why are you and I said I don't know it just is something that I just came to my mind and that's something that I don't it's not like it's for me it's for doing good or for promoting a kindness and so anyways, with this foundation that they send, set up, it just seems like the logical direction, like that was some preparation for me. And so we would like to create a Live Like Lily foundation that promotes uh, the type of life that Lily lives, having it involve scholarships for anywhere from any of the arts and dancing to humanitarian projects and the idea of a perfect, perpetual fund would be to have enough uh, amount that we could do and function off of the interest uh, annually and continue to grow. She loved uh, running, as Stacy mentioned before, she just fell in love with it last year. And so we hope to have people who are interested in promoting this Live Like Lily help us as a team to reach that objective um, to have runs, to have events, to have dance competitions. Any ideas that people have, I think I would be interested in um, hearing about and promoting. And so we, the funds that have been given have been incredibly, incredibly, incredibly generous and so kind, particularly just to the response of a memorial fund. But I hope that we can raise much, 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 much more and get to that goal of being able to allow Lily's Foundation be a perpetual thing that we can bless the lives of people throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Oh, you should know that there's already a Live Like Lily Foundation. The name is spelled a little different. It's Live Like Lily with one L. And there's also a Live Like Lily Facebook page. It's a clothing line <laughs> with it spelled L-I-L-Y. So it's L-I-L-L-I. -L -L -I. It's yeah. Live Like Lily. And there is a Facebook page that was created, Live Like Lily, spelled L-I-L-L-I. -L -L -I. And we would invite everybody 
somebody who knows Lily or has memories of Lily to go on to that, um, that up and to go on to that and I don't know how I do I have to share that with people or anyways if you if you look it up and add for a friend I'd love to have people share their comments any memory that they have of Lily Stacy said that she would like to put together some type of a record um, where we could have memories about Lily or things that people had and that would be a great venue if they could go on Facebook and share those memories that would be really really awesome um, oh, and also hashtag, yeah. For Instagram, is that what Instagram is? Yeah, is hashtag. Any pictures, any pictures that you like have Lily. of Lily, just hashtag live like Lily. And also, if you have any ideas for service that we could do, we are we are wanting those ideas. Any kind of ideas to um, to add to ours would be great. Yeah. Um. I wanted to also just share just a little bit more, maybe a little bit more on a spiritual note, because this has been pretty significant for me in how to uh, cope or handle this experience. And um, um, normally, when I have a, a personal experience or maybe a spiritual experience that's tender to me and very personal, I keep that personal. I might share it with my wife or share it with my journal or share it with a very select few. But um, I had some experiences on Monday, just this last Monday after immediately following that have been really impactful and that I feel very compelled to share with everybody that I can. I've shared them with strangers. I've shared them with people who have just said they're sorry. And um, that was Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. <laughs> but um, sun, Saturday was crazy for me mentally. Um, Sunday was absolutely draining, and it was very, very, very hard day for all of us. And I needed a really good sleep. And so I was staying across the street from the hospital by myself in this little area um, and anyways I got a really good sleep and I woke up on Monday morning and the first thoughts that came to my mind when I woke up as you can imagine were oh just an intense pain in my heart and the realization and the reality that we had lost our daughter and I had a visual image of my in my mind of her when she was had passed away when I had seen her the um, early Sunday morning. And as that started to fill my breast with hurt and sadness, just it's like it was just off to my right. All of a sudden I just heard this, Dad, Dad, I'm not dead. Stop thinking that I'm dead. I'm alive and I'm happy. And I'm in a place just like you taught me I would be. And it's wonderful. And I'm doing a very great work here. And that was like, whoa. And I, I really kind of set me back a little bit. And from that moment um, I was on cloud nine I really was I was excited I was full of light and full of love and full of just heaven was in my chest and I just was so excited to go over to the hospital and tell Stacy what I had just experienced and um, I had to make a bunch of phone calls and stuff before I could go and um, I was kind of sweaty and really yucky. I don't know why I'm talking about I need a shower. I must like showers. I do like showers. Anyway, I was just about to get in the shower and I just, we I'd been worrying about where we were going to have this funeral. We've had people from all over the place wondering where's the funeral going to be. Da, da, da. And that was kind of weighing my mind down a little bit and trying 
stressor, and so I, I knelt down and I, I said a, I said a prayer, and I said, Heavenly Father, I need some help. I we've got hundreds of people that are wondering where this funeral is going to be, and I don't, you know, we've got some things that would make sense to have it in Utah, since that make it easy on a lot of people. We live here, and we're planning on being here, so it makes sense to have it here. And anyways, I just said I need some direction. I need some help. Where would Lily want to have this funeral? <laughs> it was just like in the morning. And it was like she just said, well, Dad, you haven't even asked me yet. And so I said, okay, Lily, um, <laughs> where – where do you want to have this funeral? And she said, I want the funeral to be in Rapid City because I want to be there when we get a temple in Rapid City. And we've been praying for a temple in Rapid City ever since we came here um, in 2014. In fact, when we, yeah, when we came, the state president had recently just had an impression that we need to start praying for a temple in Rapid City. So Lily apparently told me that, um, very strongly that she wanted to be buried here in Rapid City and uh, that she was going to be participating in preparing this people for a temple here in Rapid City. And uh, that was just such a sweet and such a tender experience for me. And I realize that probably not everybody that loses somebody gets the opportunity to have something like that. And normally I would be inclined to keep that very personal, but I've just felt like she wants people to know that she is alive. Her mortal body is uh, finished, but that she is alive spiritually. I could picture her so clearly in those two instances right next to me. It's like this body of light and this brilliant smile, just like you see in the that picture behind. She just was absolutely amazing. She was radiant. And that's brought a lot of peace. I, too, felt her close, and she's um, maybe not in the exact same way that Josh has received that his confirmation or his experience but I know that she is so happy and we were talking in Young Women's today and one of her best friends said I know that she's happy she's ha the happiest she's ever been and she said that's hard to be <laughs> that's hard to beat because she was just always so happy but um, I can feel her and as I um, told about her life at her funeral, I, I knew it was because of everyone's prayers, and I knew it was because Lily was there, and she was helping me to be able to tell about her beautiful life. And also another really cool experience is we had the open house memorial and her funeral every friend that came through i gave them a hug and i could feel like i felt lily and it was like lily they were getting one last hug from lily i felt an overpowering love and i told each one of them that she loved them so much because she really did she loved her friends and so I'm grateful for those experiences and for that um, confirmation that she is alive and that she's there around us. And it was kind of cool, another little precious thing that happened just, it was, it was just a few days. It was actually Wednesday. Did they get the peaches on Wednesday? Yeah. Well, um, I can't remember. Anyways, we do we give peaches off out at the office for work, and they'd stop by the office, and um, I was treating patients, and uh, Lily 
came up behind me and um, she just kind of said, can I, can I, you know, kind of have this look in her eye like she wanted to watch. So I asked the patient and um, thankfully the patient said, yes, that's fine. She would be happy to have Lily peek over my shoulder and watch what I was doing. And um, we were just, I had just, what? Why? Okay. Um, yeah. Anyways, I don't, I don't know the status. It looks like there's a little bit of delay. But um, so Lily, Lily was just standing behind me, and I was, I had just um, taken a tooth out, and we were doing, um, I put an implant in the patient's, and I was just putting some bone grafting around that situ, that um, implant, and uh, Lily says, Dad, where do you get the bone? And I said that uh, we, we get it from people who donate their bodies to science. Um, and then we were able to get it in a little bottle. And she just, I remember her just being so excited. And she said, that's awesome. I would love to do that. That's amazing. And so then when she passed away, I just had a very strong feeling that, um, and a healthy young girl like her, that was a really cool experience for me that as people asked and they asked me if we would consider having Lily um, be a donor, that was just a tender little something for me that I could with full confidence say, yes, I know that she would want to be able to do this and help. Um, and we've just had a number of little miracles and a number of little awesome tender mercies uh, associated with this. We've had, when we came back from our um, Scott's Bluff to our house in Rapid City, people had been at our house, they had cleaned our house, they had mowed the lawn, they had done laundry, they had stocked the, shoe, the shelves with food, we had paper products, and it was just so beautiful. We've just had a legion of angels coming to our aid and and we have felt in the most real way that we can describe your prayers and being answered in our behalf it has been I can't we can't really describe accurately in rough words what's happened and then two days later a group of gentlemen came and they just descended on my house and they finished uh, building a deck project that I've been kind of working on, maybe a little slowly, but that was a huge blessing for me. And you can obviously see the smile on Stacy's face for that being able to be done. And people have just been so, so kind and so gracious to us um, at every point along the way. Um, I, so I don't know what more. Do you guys have questions? I have no idea how it looks like you guys are way delayed with in terms of where we're at. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I'm just not at the bottom of the comments. So um, if somebody puts a comment on, um, I don't know how fast we receive it, if it's immediate or not. But do you guys have questions for us? Um, can you guys um, can you guys give us a thumbs up if you can hear us still? <laughs> Maybe we've just been uh, talking, talking to ourselves. <laughs> so someone asks, how is my shoulder? Um, I have a broken clavicle and a broken scapula and a fractured toe, but everything will and but everything will heal. And um, <laughs> Josh is, <laughs> and I do have obviously a black eye going on here but it's it'll everything will heal so it's doing pretty good Derek and uh, that would be you that would ask about the shirt I know <laughs> I, I'm I don't know how I got lucky enough to wear a pink shirt but um, the my mom's family every Labor Day for I don't know the last 39 years or something has been having a reunion every Labor Day weekend and 
they had the week reunion this weekend and they almost canceled it, but we told them to keep on going. And um, so this shirt is from the Phillips family reunion and it's uh, you can see what it says on there. So, and I got pink. I mean, I don't know how that happened. I any, got the pink. Whoops, that makes it look like I've got this. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway. So they were just, his whole family was just here and they all wanted to get a picture. So we all had our shirts on and it was really sweet of them to do a shirt in memory of Lily. So. Yeah. And guys that can sp sport a pink shirt, I mean, I think that says a lot about guys that can sport pink shirts. So. What other questions? Oh, well, well, these are coming so fast. Um, how's Stacy's shoulder? Thank you. Hearts on the shirt. I missed your first part. Um, you know, if you missed the first part, you I think that this it. has all been recorded, and yeah. you can go back and watch it. Yes, the children are all okay. They seem to be good. Oh, we should tell the story with Isabella and Katie. Oh, that. So there's been, we feel like there's been a miracle a minute during this whole like week. Um, so Isabel was the, for part of the time when the rescuers were coming to, ambulance was coming to the crash site, she held Lily in her arms and Lily obviously had, um, hit her head really hard and um, had a lot of blood. So she, um, Anyways, it was a couple the next day, and we're at the hospital, and she was just Sunday. in Josh's arms, kind of crying and saying she just had she just wanted to get out of the hospital because she just couldn't get that picture out of her mind. And she said, "I need Katie," and Katie is Josh's brother Luke's daughter, and we actually had her here this summer for a month, and they just had the best time, all three of them. Lily, Katie, and Izzy, and they just always said, like, we're like sisters. Um, so she said she needed Katie, and we're like, oh, I know. But then without us talking to Luke, he had a feeling, which is Lily. It was her spirit telling, just orchestrating this whole thing. Um, he felt prompted that he needed to just send Katie to Rapid City, and not just for a visit, but for to enroll in school and um, live here for a bit and then Katie came down and said I need to be with Izzy and so the next day she was on an airplane and she's and went to the first day of middle school and she's just such a resilient girl she's our um, and is loving um, I guess in Utah sixth grade is elementary so she's very excited to be in middle school and have her own locker and they're so excited their lockers are together and they have one class together, and they're, um, the difference in Isabel has been absolutely amazing. So we consider, yeah, we consider that a huge blessing and a big miracle, and we consider um, Katie our angel. And to Isabel, I've thought a lot about her and her strength to be able to do that and to um, – she's just stood so strong and – um, I admire my Isabel. One of the things, I, I went to the school with them for the open house, Katie oh, yeah. and Isabella, and I was a little bit worried that they were going, it was going to be a little awkward, but those two just, they were all over the place, and I didn't hardly even end up seeing them, and just, you know, 12 hours before that, Isabel was very, 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 having a hard time so that was a huge huge blessing for us to have that happen um what other questions you guys are i'm amazed at how much um we uh, we just can't say enough that prayers are being answered for us and i know that what happens in my life when i pray for something and I start hearing that the prayers have been answered, I have a tendency that my prayers start dropping gradually for that thing. Um, but we will, even though prayers have been answered, we certainly need lots of prayers and we know that it's a, a, it's a roller coaster of emotions. So we ask for your continued prayers because we we're going to need them. Definitely going to need them. 
Um, we talked about at the very beginning kind of how the accident happened. Um, like I say, uh, you can review that if you would like to in terms of, I guess you can watch this video.